I'm here in Big Chimney, West Virginia, with my buddy John Blizzard. How you doing, John? Doing great. <laughs> doing great. <laughs> and uh, we have rehearsed this whole thing. Totally, yeah. This we're, it's totally scripted. We got it written down right. I've known John for about 25 years, I think, mm -hmm. since the first started coming out here to West Virginia when Pat and I got married. She, she was already a West Virginia fan of music, dancing, and all. But I came out here and got immediately hooked and been back every year, sometimes every year. several times a year. But uh, when I met John, uh, <coughs> I thought of him just as a fiddler and a banjo player, but uh, he plays a whole lot of instruments. I've got the CD you gave me when I first came out here. This was a cassette tape originally, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. And 1995. How many instruments do you play on this thing? I don't know. I have to look. Take a look at there. Well, a guitar, uh, banjo, fiddle, mandolin, bass, cello, Irish heart, and Scottish bagpipes. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. that, uh, all that on here, and you're the only musician on here, too. Right. You? No, I was the only one I could afford. Well, right, right. Yeah, I work cheap for myself, too, and I charge myself very much. <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, I came out, I know it's called Possum's Big Fiddle Show, but, you know, I've had a hanker to learn to play the Scottish pipes for a while. I bought this thing several years ago, and I've always been threatening to come have you show me how to get started because I didn't want to start wrong. You know, like with any instrument, if you start yeah. out wrong, you're wrong forever. Yeah. So uh, the old bagpipe chanter, take a look at that thing. See if it's in, tell me if it's any good. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. Now, what is the brand of this thing? I think it says Gibson somewhere. Oh, there. yes. That's what all the, all the competitive pipe bands, I was in a pipe band here in Charleston for about 15 years. It was... Uh, the uh, 130th uh, Air Guard, Air National Guard Highlanders, mm -hmm. kind of associated with the Air Guard, and uh, we, you know, we had a really good pipe band, and uh, but now all the, you know, uh, the set of pipes that I have, I have on loan to a young man who used to be an Allegheny Echo student who plays fiddle and uh, now pipes. He's down in Lexington, Kentucky, and he's. Uh, Using them, and they were made in Glasgow. Uh, the company is Hardy, H A R D I, and uh -huh. world famous yeah. pipes. And That's actually a famous name in Scotland too. Oh, yeah. It's a Hardy Press that publishes a lot of yeah. fiddle music. I think. What if they're? It's got to be the same family. I Probably. Think, yeah. But basically, uh, all our chanters were, um, you know, typically pipes are made of African blackwood, and uh, and the chanters as well. But all the competitive pipe bands use Gibson chanters, synthetic chanters, because they're all in perfect tune together. Uh huh. Because the old pipe, each one was handmade, and they got it as close, you know, as close yeah. as they could. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're called uh, an A instrument. You know, the the written music is in the key of A. Mm -hmm. so you can only play nine notes on. It. Pipe chanter. Yeah, but all the all the uh, competitive pipe bands now use uh, this brand. Uh, it's like the best in the world. Oh, so, so that's a good one to start on. Oh, yeah, the best. Cool. cool. Yeah, John yesterday was showing me uh, the fingering. I'm not going to torture anybody now by trying to play yeah, the scale. Yeah, that's kind of a private thing <laughs> at this level. But some point in the future, in a future episode, if there are any. Well, I'm sure there will be. I'll play this for you. I'll, I'll, yeah. have, I'll have John review me over Skype, maybe, and then yeah, I'll play it. What would be a good first tune to start? What's an easy first tune to start with? Oh, uh, The Green Hills of Tyrol or uh, Amazing Grace. I mean, everybody okay. plays there that you on go. the pipe. Yeah, and then the tough bit comes when you start putting in the grace notes, too, right? That's well, yeah, but you have to do that on all those tunes. Sure. Because when we, you know, how you typically are trained, they say it takes 21 years to make a piper. Mm -hmm. And is it in seven year increments of uh, yes. learning? Three. Learning, um, playing, and performing. Uh huh. All right. I was going to say learning, playing out of tune. <laughs> That's kind of why you do with the mandolin, you know. Yeah. Play it for, play it for years out of tune. And then, yeah. And then when you finally get it tuned, you think you just right. have a rock. And then it goes out of tune right away. <laughs> <laughs>
Now you played the Irish harp too. Yeah. What tell us about this old harp? It's a, it's a well, the parent company is Lion and Healy. In uh, in the early 1900s, of course they had uh, they had a factory in New York as well. Mm -hmm. So basically, they hired two Irishmen, one named Clark and one named O'Brien, and they made these harps. It's designed like a classical full-size harp. Sure. You know, it's got uh, it's a rounded back with the steel ribs, and you know, it's basically a miniature concert harp. And uh, they're all hand painted, and uh, all the little uh, pins here, the bridge they call bridge pins, are ivory, and each one is a different diameter. <laughs> yeah, I was noting that yesterday. It looks like they by a millimeter or something yeah. as they get larger. That's a that's a quite a piece of detail there. You would think they'd just you know use the same size peg on each one. Well, yeah, it, the strings are different. Everyone's different. So. <laughs> but basically, uh, and it's all hand painted. And um, actually, I think I found the daughter of the, the Mr. Clark that made this one. I think I found her online or something. Really? And she collects these. Huh. You know, the sure. dad did. But, uh, but and uh, I always wanted to learn to play, and uh, I worked next to a record shop, and this guy knew I played, you know, Irish and Scottish kind of fiddle and stuff, and he brought me an Alan Stavell album. Alan Stavell, who's that? He is from Brittany, and he's uh, the father of the Renaissance of the Celtic harp. Uh-huh. He's from Brittany, and uh, he was also instrumental in retaining Breton language in the school system. Hmm. His father was a harp maker, and his last name is Cochevelu, but he just goes by Alan Stavell. But Brittany, that's France, right? Yeah. 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 That's like the Celtic region of France. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But basically, I wanted to, uh, you know, he, I listened to this record, and I worked at a music shop, and we went to actually McCormick Place in Chicago mm -hmm. for a NOM show. Right. And I met a company from uh, Arles in France called CAMAC, C-A-M-A-C, and they had, they sold Bombards, and, you know, I brought all this stuff back to the music store, you know. Sure, you're buying for the Bombards and wholesale for the store, stuff, yeah. so I bought myself a harp kit, which they had to ship by ship, mm -hmm. <laughs> back then, uh -huh. and uh, basically uh, everything came intact except for the uh, the bridge, this strip down the center, right. and it had warped. So I went to a local luthier and had him, you know, make one. And I built my first harp, and that was steel strong. And then uh, through the years I've had, I had a line of Healy Troubadour, like you guys had. Yeah, right. And I had uh, a couple of pedal harps. Oh, and really? You had some pedal harps? Too. Yeah. Wow. English pedal harps. Mm -hmm. But they're just unwieldy and, you know. Yeah. So anyway, and I, I, I gave my the harp that I built to my grandson who lives in Texas. He has that now and uh, I, you know, this is the one I used on that recording and mm -hmm. uh, I played for years in like you know dinner clubs and art openings and right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, uh, background music or whatever. But uh, and, uh, I don't play I don't play very much anymore. But uh, still, yeah. still uh, Be still love it. Beautiful instrument. Yeah. And even this little stand is part of Yeah, it's just uh, got the same serial number. It's so like a matching yeah. thing. Same serial number as the heart. <laughs> and also the legs fold up. So it's transportable then. Right. Oh, that's very cool. You know, and of course you just you can take it off the stand. Yeah. Use a little lock. Put it on a table or something. Yeah. How, what, what year was this built again? Uh, it's got a 1915 patent. Patent date. Close to being in tune. Yep. Yeah. That's how you fine tune them when they're sharp. Uh, sure, cool. sure. <laughs> Just stretch it a little bit. Yeah. But those are, that's nylon and gut. Most nylon of those. gut. Yeah. And these are uh, the wound, all the wound strings are uh, silk core. Oh, like a classical guitar string. Right. 
And then cool. some of some of these are uh, uh, some are gut, some are uh, uh, nylon. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the paint job of the of the Irish uh, decorations on there is really cool. Yeah, too. the Celtic art. Yeah, the woven pretty, Celtic art thing. That's really. Yeah, nice. It's got little uh, little uh, shamrocks on the corners here. Oh, sure. <laughs> Just to add a little more and detail. On, on the back here, it's mm -hmm. got little shamrocks above each hole. Yeah, that's really cool. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I played a lot of weddings with it. And some funerals. Hey, should we try to play a fiddle tune? You got a fiddle handy? It's out in the shop. All right, well, let's, maybe let's wander out to the shop. Okay. All right. Well, we're out here in the shop where all the magic <coughs> takes place. Yeah, that's this, where the cobwebs. This is the place. A little ambient air conditioner always fine. Don't we'll turn that off. No, no, it's fine. It's a, it's a Otherwise, it's going to get hot. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with this hot thing. Oh, okay. yeah. you do. We're going to. And I've got your books right there, by the way. Oh, right sure. you sure do, I guess. Oh, oh, let's do this. Yes. Go ahead. This needs to be. Oh, here. that needs to be shown. And you're uh, yeah. up there. The Swananoa Gathering. <coughs> uh, John was showing me this in very interesting cover of the Swananoa Gathering. It's uh, I'll put up a slide of it here. Yeah, you you were showing me this, and I was thinking, what came over them to I put know. this picture on the front of their camera? I mean, it's a Bible Belt place. And, right. Uh, yeah, it's a I private think, college, right? Private. I think uh, Methodist college. Well, it's, it is it is a religious theme, but it's very it's you know, fairly explicit. Little, explicit. Some, some liberties. <laughs> Li or libertines. The libertines. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty and, uh, interesting. He looks like Marty Feldman with red hair. Uh, you know, you're you you're right. Show. You're right. She does a lot. With a lot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and apparently there was a banjo in the Garden of Eden. That's comforting. Well, that's, yeah, that's, like that's very comforting. <laughs> Gives me hope. So yeah, we were talking about tuning the fiddle here just a minute ago. and excited. Probably be a good idea. idea. It's, it's kind to the audience, you know. I mentioned that uh, this is the first episode. If there'd be another episode, you know, sometimes the pilot episode you get canceled after the pilot. I episode. figure, you know, you're going to get so many. What do they? Call, it's going to go viral. Viral, yes. But not the kind of virus we're wanting, though. I think. Right. Yeah. It appears I'm sharp. Okay. Let's. See. I mean, well, I knew my, that. My fiddle. Was I knew sharp. you were sharp. You know, Play me an A. Here you go. Oh, I got enough. Perfect. Oh, I knew it was a little flat there. But you were mentioning using these uh, tuning forks, you know. You young and this is, uh, use these electronic tuners. This is how we used to tune before there was electricity. And <laughs> it was so funny last year. I, I teach at some uh, field, uh, camp, music camp called Allegheny Echoes. And, mm -hmm. And I always take my fiddle repair kit, which is a big tackle box over here. Yeah. And I always have to fix somebody, you know, we've got like five fiddle classes. Sure. People showing up with fiddles in all kind of conditions. You know, go imagine. to room uh, 209 and he'll fix your fiddle or whatever. So basically these two young boys came over. Actually, one of them was in my class, Trevor Jordan, I think. And he had some sort of issue. Oh, perfect. And uh, anyway, so I did whatever it was. I think I've had to put a new bridge on or something. Something pretty major then, yeah. not just a minor <coughs> adjustment. Yeah. And so uh, I had uh, used my bridge jack to do all that. So basically, when we got done, <coughs> I went like this. And they looked at me and said, man, that's old school. <laughs> You're course, so these, right. These are like 14, 15 year old boys. Sure, sure. They'd never seen a pitchfork, well, a tuning no, fork, had they? Yeah, pitchfork. Pitchfork, yeah, pitchfork. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a pitchfork, but it wasn't welcome when you know I was being That's chased the kind somewhere. I used yeah. on the farm. Right. For hay. But you know, I, I I'm always plumbing the depths of uh, how cheap a something I can buy. You know, if I, yeah. like the cheapest wine that you can stand to drink. Right. You know, the cheapest beer you can stand to drink. And sometimes you get below that line. And I know. It's not doesn't work yeah. well. I found the same thing with these darn tuning forks. I bought a couple on Amazon. I'm a big Amazon shopper, you know, and and they were like four dollars. I said, well, how can I go wrong? Mm -hmm. Well, I tuned they, up my fiddle to Pat 
and was playing the piano and I started to play and she said, you're not in tune. And we turn, turns out that thing's like five cents. The one we bought was out of tune. It wasn't an A. It was like well, 445 buy, or something. I always buy the German ones. Yeah. They're always pretty accurate. Yeah. So I, I mean, have, I test them with an electronic tuner just to, you know, when you, when you to get verify them in. that they're are what they say. But I discovered that if you're going to buy a, a tuning fork, spend nine dollars, not four dollars. Yeah. Worth the extra hell. five dollars. The fact. Yeah. Well, that, that <laughs> reminds me when I first started playing harp. I had my first harp, which is metal strung. <coughs> People come over in the house and want to play and stuff. And uh, of course, they didn't know I was playing a lot of early music and mm -hmm. you know all kinds castle of castle music. Yeah. yeah. So basically, and a lot of them weren't very good musicians. So what I did was I tuned half a step below standard, and they would come over and say, "Well, you know, get that harp, let's play something." And I said, "Well." You know, boys, I can't tune it up all the way to standard because the soundboard might break. Sure, yeah. And so I, I avoided uh, playing with people for years by tuning <laughs> half a step low. <laughs> <laughs> then you didn't have to join in. That's right. <laughs> That's a good idea. I didn't have to listen to really bad fiddlers or right. whatever. I'd love to play with you, but I'm not in tune. <clears throat> oh, it's just the nature of the beast. Howdy, folks. This is Charlie Walton. Thanks for watching this episode of Possum's Big Fiddle Show. How about taking a moment after the program is over? Call my hotline at 847-920-7587. Let me know what you think. Now back to the program. All right, so uh, what are we going to try to play here? I don't know. <clears throat> Let's do uh, Faded Love. Okay. All right. I'll play the second. That's what I was. That's what I asked you about. I love. Uh -oh, wait a minute. I love twin fiddling. <laughs> I'm trying to learn to play oh, twin let's, fiddle. Let's, That's no, let's first let's do the uh, show can farewell. Oh, now tell us about this little trick you've discovered. Well, a uh, uh, bunch of old guys I'm playing with now. Been playing with them since played with them a couple of years in the early '70s. They all retired. Now they're all you know 67 to 84. <laughs> and so one of the uh, the other fiddle player, he's a classical violinist who plays pretty good fiddle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we were. He wanted to do a show and farewell. So we were out here practicing, just sitting where we are. And uh, so you know how we decided as a group to do it. He would do it all the way through, A and B part by himself. Mm -hmm. Then I would join in, and I would play harmony on the second time through. Yes. And on the third time through, I would just play chordal backup. Okay. You know, two note chordal. Yeah, backup. yeah. Well. <clears throat> I forget when it happened, but we were, uh, he played the first time through, and then, you know, uh, played the A and B part, and I was supposed to join him and play harmony. Instead, I went to the B part while he was playing the A part, and about halfway through, I said, shit, this works. <laughs> you mean kind of by accident? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, let, let's do it. Okay, all right. You play it through by yourself. Okay, well, why don't you do the chords with me? First time.
Well, you know, that's the genius of Jay Unger. I, I bet he knows that. I bet he was... He, it's a bunch of different chords, but somehow they lay on each on top of each other, don't they? Because the chords to the company, the second part, are very different. Oh, yeah. Than but the they all... You know, and because when I'm... When you, you're playing the first part, yes. and I'm playing the second part together, mm -hmm. there's uh, minor kind of sounding yes. stuff. There's counterpoint. There's dominant seventh chords. Dominant sevenths and harmony. Right. And you know it just man, it works. It's kind of neat. That's <laughs> great. You need to maybe uh, do something. Uh, oh well, it appears you're doing it. Right. Oh, I don't know. I think I'll have to edit this part out. I don't want to. I'm not ready to share this with the world. So yeah. Well, this. Yeah. This yeah. might be something. <laughs> a good secret to hold keep. it back. Just for a <laughs> <laughs> well, what else could we play? A, a snappy number. Oh. Well, I'm not a very snappy fiddler anymore. You, you pick some. Golden slippers, you play, ever mess with that? Or, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Maybe you could twin me on it, play through it together once, and then you can All find right. some harmonic notes okay. there. Swedish. <laughs> Swedish fiddling. About three months later. Oh, is this a special uh, edition of Golden Seal? Yeah, just dedicated to Frank. Oh, wow. I've got to buy myself a copy of this over there tomorrow. Yeah, well, uh, Stan will be over there, Stan Baumgartner. He's wow. the editor of Golden Seal. And uh, uh, he's a fiddle player, by the way. Uh huh. He's What's his name? Stan Baumgartner. Okay, good. He's I'll the editor to to of him. this. And basically, he. Uh, Oh God, that's where I look like a car salesman. <laughs> just cover this. this is one. And or I, young I, Ron Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's John, folks. No, don't, don't do that. <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, uh, the thing I always liked about Frank was uh, he was very in touch with the whole Scotch-Irish nature of people in West Virginia. Right. And it wasn't put on. It wasn't, no. it wasn't an affectation. He loved that music, and he saw the connection between the old world music and the music well, that's been played in Well, his grandfather, William uh, George, uh, was raised by slaves. Oh, really? And learned Scottish music from the slaves. But anyway, and there's... Uh, but definitely would have been in the 1800s, mid-1800s yeah, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, Civil War era. Right, wow. And that's... Those are the instruments his dad made for him when yeah. he was a little boy. He still... Well, actually... Uh, they gave uh, the family gave uh, Kim Johnson one of the banjos. Wow, this is a whole ep this is a whole, uh, the whole almost, almost whole, uh, about the thing half of the thing is, is about dedicated Frank. to Frank. You know, Frank's still influencing people. You know, he, oh yeah, Bobby learned from him. Of course, I learned from him. Tim, yeah, Mike. But uh, maybe uh, maybe you could, you could explore this thing though about the Celtic music. I mean, he was so connected with the Scottish music, especially right. Yeah. And did he teach you to play bagpipes or get you started no, playing? No, his. His student, Dennis Harrison, mm -hmm. was my pipe player. Okay, gotcha. So I learned indirectly from him. Yeah. And I got a picture Kim Johnson sent me. The last time Frank got inner ocular problem, mm -hmm. pressure, and he couldn't play in the, the great pipe. Well, let's click that uh, air conditioner off. Oh. And, uh,
Folks, this is reality here. The air conditioners come on when you're in West Virginia and it's late May. It gets hot. Hotter too. No. no. <laughs> save that for later. Yeah, save that. <laughs> that would definitely be edited. Yeah, we'd have to edit that out probably. But anyway, Frank, uh, I think it was at Echoes or Glenville one year. Uh, he, he hadn't played for like five years. And I just I always took my pipes to Glenville to the folk festival and to Echoes and play. And I just got, I just seasoned the bag. I beg your pardon? <laughs> yeah, see, I just seasoned my bag with the airtight, mm -hmm. that's what they call it, bag seasoning. And I had <clears throat> brand new synthetic drum reeds, mm -hmm. and I had a, a what's called a weak chanter reed, meaning it takes less air to activate it. Oh, okay. So Frank, you know, was there, and I think he maybe had a nip or two, and, <laughs> and um, was in the parking lot. It was either at the Folk Festival or Allegheny Echoes, and I've got that picture of, uh, I'll show it to you later, some of my fireplace metal. So he played, uh, I think he played the Highland Laddie. Uh -huh. I think that was the last time he played the, the full set of really? war pipes, which he uh, was always, <coughs> always uh, ready to tell you that they were listed in the British Army inventory under weapons. <laughs> right. And they still are, <laughs> right. as I understand it. <laughs> And anyone who's not a connoisseur of bagpipe music will think they're a weapon because they're well, yeah, they're kind of loud. Kinda well, loud. the first time I heard them was uh, there was an episode of Wagon Train, <laughs> <laughs> and there were all these Campbells going west. Uh -huh. Of with, course, Ward Bond was there with their best fake Hollywood Scottish accent. Exactly, so and basically, what you know, they were someplace they had to circle the wagon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Good defensive move. Here come the engines. Yep. Well, the Campbells got their pipers out. And they scared them away. <laughs> <laughs> and nary a shot was fired. You know, and uh, the first time I heard it, it just you know raised the hair on my face. Oh arms yeah. And stuff. Oh yeah. So, uh, I was probably five or six years old, and then uh, eventually I ended up uh, playing the pipes. Chimney View or Big Elk? You're not sure. Well, I'll tell you what, I've had a great time here at Big Chimney this afternoon <coughs> with John. Big Chimbley. Chimbley. <laughs> Chimbley. <laughs> What, let's go out with something. What do you got? What do you got there? Faded love. All right. Indeed. Take one. <laughs> in the can. Thank you. 